All right, so as part of the study, we, before we get in a little bit of discussion about Pseudomonas, you know, overall, you know, I think the outcomes were largely favorable. Um, average duration of treatment was about seven days. Um, length of stay, uh, post-start uh, post of uh, septolazine tazobactam was 10 days. 30-day mortality was 9%, which is a relatively low statistic considering the patient population in which it was used. And re-emission rates were 17%, and infection-related re-emissions were only 9%. So again, overall, it looked pretty good. Um, and as part of that, you know, we think about the hospitals that supplied the microbiology data. Um, we had 259 who had Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and most of these Pseudomonas aeruginosa infections were ex um, res extensively beta-lactam resistant, which really means they're resistant to our commercially available beta lactams like piperacillin, tazobactam, cefepime, as well as mirapenem and imipenem. So again, it's really kind of reserved for these patients with these highly resistant pseudomonas infections. Um, so a few considerations with this is, um, you know, drug appears to be, you know, used in places where there's a need. Um, you know, once we exhaust our beta lactams, you know, particularly carbapenem resistant pseudomonas, uh, we have few available options. And I, I think to be cognizant of um, with this premier database analysis, I mentioned before, only 20% of institutions supplied at microbiology data. Um, but when we did look at those institutions, what we found is ceftolazine tazobactam use was predominantly among individuals with Pseudomonas aeruginosa infections. And not surprisingly, uh, many of these um, patients with Pseudomonas aeruginosa infections um, were, were uh, more highly resistant to commercially available um, antibiotics. So when we think about Pseudomonas aeruginosa um, our drug options are Piptazo, our Piperacillin Tazobactam, Ceftazidine or Cefepime, and a carbapenem such as Mirapenem or Imipenem. And what we found is among those with Pseudomonas infections, over 40% um, were resistant to three commercially available drug classes. So what we found is a lot of the Ceftolazine Tazobactam use were among individuals with Pseudomonas infections that were extensively beta-lactam resistant. So they're resistant to Piperacillin Tazobactam, Cefepime, as, as well as Mirapenem or Imipenem. So really the drug is being used used as kind of a risk first benef uh, benefit situation um, where we don't really have a lot of commercially available drugs to treat them. And we think about treating, you know, infections like Pseudomonas aeruginosa, you know, the rule of thumb is use a beta-lactam if a beta-lactam is available. So in these patients with these extensively beta-lactam resistant infections, that's where we saw a lot of its use among culture positive individuals.